Welcome to This Is My Architecture. Today I'm joined by Andreas from Dynatrace. G'day Andreas. Nice to meet you, Simon. Good to have you here. So what does Dynatrace do? Dynatrace is an APM solution that is monitoring both your applications and the AWS environment. So I've got application data, I've got Amazon data coming through. That feels like big volumes. Right. How do you do it? So we are placing our agents into the environment of, of our customers and these agents start monitoring the applications by putting instrumentation on them. The data is then sent into our backend and we will learn more about that in a minute. At the same time, we are subscribing to CloudWatch, which is, of course, retrieving all the health data from uh, the most important AWS services. And we are getting that data also in our backend, where we blend it completely seamlessly with all the data that we are getting from our agents. So you've got a whole lot of data coming in, and there's this interesting box at the end here. What's happening there? So this box is called Security Gateway, and it fulfills two purposes, essentially. One is that we are terminating all the SSL connections coming in here. It can be hundreds of thousands of agents and, and, and even more uh, at the same point in time. So we need to terminate all the connections here, and we're also doing demultiplexing of the data, so we reduce the number of connections when we send the data into the actual cluster in the backend. Now, hundreds of thousands of connections, real-time streaming of data, that sounds like a storage nightmare. Yes. Architecturally, how did you tackle it? Yeah, we actually came up with four different storage types to handle that. Four? four. Not two, not one, not yeah. five? Yeah, you can, you can imagine that this was not the first idea <laughs> that we had. So which four did you but go But we for? figured out that there is no, no, no SQL database and no NoSQL database that can handle all the, whole, uh, the load that we, are, that we are generating. So we need four different types of storage. Um, looking at uh, the data points that we, that we collect on the, on the left side, there are performance um, type of metrics like the CloudWatch metrics being a perfect example. They are actually handled pretty well by Cassandra, which we use as our performance warehouse for standard type of, uh, of, of purposes. When it comes to the deep data that we are capturing, single code level data, single SQL statement level of, of, of data, then we need a more specialized approach. And we are using the best quality type of elastic block storage that we can get and proprietary mechanisms to write and analyze the data to handle that amount of load. For sure. For log files, we found that another uh, storage type that Amazon offers to us fits a lot better uh, is Elastic File Services, which has exactly the requirements that we need to handle uh, log file data because we can extend EFS dynamically uh, the way we need. It has built-in redundancy, uh, which is very nice, and it exactly matches our requirements here. So we said we had four different types of, of storage. There's one more, I've got to guess. I wonder more. if our viewers can guess which is the next one. The next one is Elastic, and we, we use uh, Elastic Search to store user actions and user session data that we are capturing when we do user experience management or real user monitoring, uh, as we most frequently say. There, there, this is where the indexing capabilities of Elastic um, are fitting in very, very nice. So this is a really great example of where an architecture can't rely on just one form of storage or storage interaction. It needs a blended approach. Absolutely. And so you've intelligently decided where things go and for what purpose. Right. And as you, you mentioned in the beginning, nevertheless, you end up in a situation where we have a huge amount of data. We have a lot of computation power, of course, on top of the data that allows us to analyze the data. Nevertheless, the value of our solution is really coming from an artificial intelligence based layer that is analyzing the data and presenting it in a way to our customers that they can make use of it, right? It is one thing to have. Yeah, collecting it all. Collecting make sense of it. And presenting it in a way that uh, is useful. And that's actually where that we dot device. We have a friend here, yes. Uh, you can talk to your is, uh, system, is, can is, you? is coming in. So to speak about the architecture first, this is actually very, very simple. So through um, Alexa, of course, this is calling um, a service that we call Davis and it is implemented with Lambda functions, and then the Lambda functions are calling through the security gateway again into the backend where we have that artificial intelligence layer. So let's have an example. What would you say to... Uh, let's to give Davis. it a try, right? Alexa, ask Davis how Dynatrace is doing today. 
Everything looks fine. All systems are performing as expected, and no problems have been reported today. You'll be happy to hear that new trials are up 10% from this time last week. Thank you. That's a great. How cool is that? So a different way to interact, huge amounts of data, huge volumes, sensationally interesting. Andreas, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. And thanks everyone for watching This Is My Architecture.